to canal sidings. The football is finally over. England disgraced themselves as usual in a major tournament and a big hearty congratulations to Wales. Anyway, that's the end of my football statements. Um, as you can see, I haven't been idle during the football. I have actually managed to finish the viaduct. It's now been weathered, all the brickwork is finished, I've put the track work on the top and I have managed to get all the scenic work done on the top. So I'll take you in for a closer look. As you can see it's all weathered and dirted suitably for what I want the whole of the layout to look like and I have a completely rusty bridge here and the rest of the wall is done as well. We have a similar story around this side with the walls finished and dirty and the bridge really rusty and most of what you can see next to the bridge will be invisible once the warehouse is in place. The top has been finished off with some really rusted up track and lots of weed growth and as we come down towards the girder bridge the track finishes and has been lifted and on this side of the bridge we have a few piles of ballast with mother nature taking over. And my story on the reason for the track being severed here is that this bridge became deemed unsafe due to the fact that it's had no maintenance for many years and is rusting away. So, instead of storing wagons all the way along here, they now only store wagons from this point on and we have a stop block that's been put across the rails to stop them rolling any further. The track from here has been lifted and you can see little telltales of where the track used to be. Um, and most of the ballast has been dragged from here and piled up around this area and along here. Of course, most of that is now um, being taken over by Mother Nature. When you don't look after something, and I'm sure you know that for your own gardens, is that Mother Nature will take over. And the idea is that that's what's happened here. Mother Nature has taken over again and um, reclaimed what is rightfully hers. Um, I haven't got any videos of the construction of this any further than you saw last time, apart from one short piece demonstrating how I initially colour the bricks. Um, th there are various different colours in the brickwork around here. Um, which of course is toned right down now that it's been weathered a long way. But uh, I will show you that piece of video that I took while I was doing the work. Um, and the method I used for actually colouring the brickwork before I just added weathering powders was a method pointed out to us by Phil Parker of British Railway Modelling Magazine um, when he did a warehouse when he was building his layout Rustin Sidings, sorry, Rustin Keys, um, way back in 2015. Um, so I'll show you that bit now. Okay, my um, brick effect is like this. Sorry, it's upside down as we stand at the moment. But um, this was done by, first of all, painting it in a mortar colour and just spreading it over and then using coloured pencils. Now the ones that I use are these from Artists Loft. They're Artists Loft Fundamentals and I use four colours. I use dark blue, red brown, black and medium brown. I also use a stiff brush. So, the black is simply used along here to darken up this piece of 
brickwork. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just needs to be worn. I then brush it off with a stiff brush to get rid of any loose stuff. That's the end of the black, I don't use that for anything more. Now the blue I use to produce little dark pieces on some of the bricks. This is quite time consuming. But it produces the darker brick effect. And you have to go all over everything you're going to do with that. I'll just do this area here at the top. Having finished with the blue, I then take the red and with the red I give it a first light uneven coat. like you would if you colouring a book. Trying only to do the bit you really want to do. Having got the red on, we now go for the dark brown. You have to be careful with this, that you don't actually overdo the amount of dark brown that you put on. It is easy to do to get the wrong colour in the brickwork, and I do usually go over the black a little with it as well. Give it a brush down. Get rid of any of the loose stuff and blend anything excess in. There's a little bit there that we haven't really done. Point of the pencil didn't get in there. And there we have the first area of brickwork done on here. So now I'll go ahead and do all the rest of this like I have the other side. At the moment it's quite shiny um, but what I will do is I'll give it a few coats of Tester's Dull Coat to dull it down. Something else I've been doing in between the football is uh, looking at preparing some locos and some rolling stock to go on the railway. I've always known the sort of things I was going to play with, but uh, I didn't actually have the definitive list really until now. Um, the locos that you've seen up to now sitting around the railway, I've been a J50 and an LMS Ginty, neither of which are going to be used. Um, the first loco that I am going to be using is this old Hornby J94. Um, it was second hand when I bought it and I must have had it for about six years now. So uh, it's been around a bit, um, but it needed DCC fitting. So I've fitted it with a DCC Concepts Zen decoder, which comes with a Stay Alive unit, which I've managed to fit inside the loco, although I did have to cut a little piece of the uh, metalwork away in order to be able to get it in there. Um, it runs reasonably well, as I'll demonstrate now. Nice slow speed running. And in reverse. And we need locos that will run nicely like that. If we're going to use Spratt and Winkle couplings with delay. So I'll just put that one out of the way and we'll look at the next one. The next loco is 
this one, which is an ex Lancashire and Yorkshire pug, which again I've had for a long time. Um, I think it's a Hornby Loco. Um, again, I bought it second hand probably six or seven years ago now, um, and it also needed to be DCC fitted. I've also used in this one a DCC Concepts Zen decoder, and I have managed to get the supplied stay alive inside the you know, loco as well but I'm afraid the whole thing is fitted in the cab so you now can't see right through the cab however my intention is to add a crew um, and having done that hopefully it will be mostly hidden from view um, it does actually go we'll give it a try Not as smooth running as the J94. But, nevertheless, not too bad. Okay, we'll put that one out of the way. The next loco is a brand new loco. Um, it comes from the Model Rail magazine's special list um, and it's a Sentinel vertical boiled four wheel loco, which seems fairly ideal for a tiny little layout like this. I bought it DCC ready. Um, and bought a DCC Concepts Zen decoder 8-pin uh, direct to plug into it. Unfortunately, once I plugged the decoder in, I couldn't get the body back on. There's just not enough height. I think the design is pretty poor in that respect. Anyway, I tried adjusting the mountings of the decoder plug the decoder plug that's inside the loco and I managed to drop that a millimetre still couldn't get the body on I then took the uh, insulating sleeve the shrink wrap sleeve off of the Zen decoder almost got the body on so then I just took a little bit out of the roof inside just to allow me that last little bit and now the roof is actually holding the decoder in place. There is no way it's going to fall off. I also did manage to get the DCC Concepts stay alive inside as well. Um, but that's sat at the other end of the cab. Um, it's very smooth, but being only four-wheeled, it is very prone to stopping. So let's see how it goes. Very smooth and quiet, but it could do with a larger keep alive, really, which I don't think I'm going to be able to get inside unless I fill the cab completely. Anyway, we'll see how it goes. And this is the last loco for use on canal sidings. This is another brand new loco and is the Backman Johnson 1F with the half cab and I bought it in British Railways livery rather than the early crest just to make a change and to rather reinforce the loco, the, the layout date of the early 1950s when there were still plenty of locos that said British Railways on the side. Um, this one was the easiest loco to add DCC to. Um, it has a six pin socket. I used the DCC Concepts six pin direct decoder. Um, it plugged straight into the socket. There was no issues with how much room there was around it. And underneath it, there was plenty of room to put the Stay Alive unit. Um, and it was probably the quickest loco I've, one of the quickest locos I've ever added DCC to.
was me going the wrong way to start with. It is a beautiful runner. And we'll creep along. That is speed step one, sorry, speed step two. I'll hit the other loco again, let's come back. That is running at speed step two. That is speed step one. It really is a super loco. Desperate for some crew in the cab. So there you have it. They are the four locomotives that I've prepared with DCC decoders. Um, they've all got to have uh, Spratt and Winkle couplings fitted. Um, I sh it's actually only a bar I need to fit to locos. I don't fit the whole coupling. Um, and they will all need to be weathered and, where possible, have a crew fitted into the cab. Um, so, a lot more work yet, but at least I've got some locos ready to be able to do a few uh, proper tests of the track with uh, some um, real stock. Rolling stock, uh, I have a large collection of old mainline wagons, which were actually very good. Ma uh, old mainline early Backman wagons and one or two FX wagons, which are actually very good, I think. Um, their disadvantage is they have plastic wheels. So I have just purchased a large selection of Backman wheels, which I will be fitting. I will also be using a little tip that I learnt from an American railroader on YouTube to be able to make wagons uh, visible to the train on track detectors. Remember the the earlier video I demonstrated train on track detectors and said they only detect something that will take current like a loco or maybe a brake um, with a flashing light. Well this time um, I intend to add a resistor and if we just pick up a wagon and bring it up to the camera this wagon happens to have metal wheels and what I've decided to do is add a surface mount resistor between the wheel and the axle on one side and then short out the insulation on the other side. Um, I shall do that on both axles. The resistor I've worked out can be uh, quite large, 47 kilo ohms is what I've decided upon. It would still work with 68 kilo ohms. 100 kilo ohms it didn't work with um, and they will be fixed on with some uh, cyanoacrylate adhesive i.e. super glue and the connections will be made with conductive paint so we'll see how that goes then any wagon will be detected or any train of wagons will be detected on any track it's actually an experiment that I'm doing as much as anything because on my other railway one of these days and canal sidings I'm afraid is taking all my time at the moment but on my other railway I want to implement a little bit of automatic control using a laptop um, and in order to do that I need to be able to detect all rolling stock not just locos anyway so that's another area of uh, work that I've been doing in between watching the football matches. Um, I've wrapped this video up now, I think we've uh, spent long enough on it and uh, hopefully next time I'll be back we'll, we'll have something new to talk about. So uh, thanks for watching and goodbye everybody. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and like if uh, you do so and thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.